then I never really thought of breaking a record or getting 60 or anything. I was just simply in the team and we, we used to get two pound bonus. That's what we were after mostly, of course. Uh, two pound for a win, a pound for a draw. Yeah. And now to be a lot. Uh, when mm-hmm. I first went to Everton, I was only on six pound because I was too young, you see. One of the youngsters. So it went up uh, a pound the following season and then soon afterwards uh, they applied to the league and they gave me the full eight. I wanted uh, 10 goals to get 60 in three matches. One against the Villa on the Saturday, one against Burnley at Burnley, Turf Moor, during the week on the Wednesday, and then the final game, Arsenal on the Saturday. I got two against the Villa, so I said, well, Ronnie, only won another seven, only two matches. So, of course, when we go off to Burnley, the next thing you know, the ball started running a bit my way. Before our time, I scored four. The crowd themselves, our they were going up the deep end. I went off the field then, I pulled the top muscle. My old trainer, Harry Cook, from that night, from the Wednesday night until the Friday, he was with me at home, at my home. Old Harry kept putting these here anti phlogestine uh, plasters on it or until the Friday night, even leaving one on overnight as well. It was that actually, but uh, it's, it's just like an ordinary, any other ordinary plas- uh, clay. This one wasn't so well known, but it was the best one, as all that he proved. Anyway, it's uh, it all that he's cured it. Anyway, uh, the last goal came three or four minutes off the end when this year ball came across the Malik Troop, the outside left, corner kick, put it this one in, and then I went up to the uh, referee right. right away. There was no pulling you about and all that in those days. There was a bit of a knock on the shoulder or tell him I'm going up for a genius. I'd be in there now. I would be over. And which I did, I got out of it, and that was that. Because because we got murdered. Like we were being presented with the with the lead cop in the stand. It was lucky in the sense that I went there. I did get to Everton from there after a while. The secretary that we had there, he was secretary, manager, trainer, he was everything for the fellow that was running that. I was still waiting while that time, still waiting and waiting. I was refused about oh, eight or nine teams, even Newcastle. They showed me the ground at Newcastle St James' Park, they took me there because we were playing Ashington, where the Charters came from. And as I say, the uh, the Arsenal, of course, they wanted me. I played my first game against the Arsenal on the following Saturday at Ivory. Apparently. I had this goal, the goalkeeper pulled it up the side netting and threw it up the field. And when I turned down, the referee says, play on.
I woke up in the uh, the only time I was ever in the bloody workhouse. In the naughty one, yeah. I was asleep for four days. They decided to ship me over to Liverpool and I came through. And I remember going coming down on the old we used to have the old luggage boats then, you know. They took me up to Alder Hay Hospital, probably in there. And uh, oh, I was there. I was okay. You know, I was feeling them, feeling the best as well. I heard a voice one day, the sister, the sister had come to me and asked me, she said, could you get, get me a few apples and pearls to me, you know, to do that. I said, certainly, yeah. Not good enough, I just got up this tray and there uh, I was knocking uh, the apples out for me. The voice said, hey, if you can get up them bloody trees knocking apples and pearls down, you can get back to bloody Everton and start playing football. And it was out on Macintosh, the out. The house secretary. We had no money to spend. Yeah, I'll tell you, well, going back any time, you know. <laughs> that was it, so I went. Well, it, it'd be, as regards the wingman, if uh, you have to have the wingman, it's down to sense the, te the team is like 11, there's 11 men in a team. But the wingman, it all depends on this, that they anticipate my movement in the middle of that field, knowing I'm watching them when they've got the ball, and then vice versa. They're watching me when I've got the ball. I always wanted a good, fast, hard ball sent over, because a goalkeeper has got no chance whatever. And that ball comes over, travelling at about, say, what, 50 miles an hour. He's got no chance. You only need a flick and it's in the corner. Oh no, you want the men with you, especially uh, the wingman. As I've said before to different people, they keep asking me this question. I think myself, if I'd have had Peter Thompson and uh, Callaghan, who then was playing at Liverpool, if I'd had them in my prime, I'd have probably got on with the city because uh, I was in a public house one night watching them play a Spanish team at, at uh, Anfield. And the balls that came over there, uh, well, I'd scored three before half time standing at the bars. When he, when he asked, he came down into the dressing room and he said, you're that 50 Dean guy, you know, jeez, he said, you can get some cash today, you know. Oh yeah, I said, I'll get some cash. I said, I'm here, my name, I'm here, my name. How much you get? You know, what's it? He said, eight pounds. Eight pounds, how much is that? I said, come on. Well, a pound in real money, which it would be a bad yeah. something yeah. like that. But, Jesus Christ, well, <laughs> pound. Uh -huh. Should I demand two thirds of this gate? Well, that was when the Geordies invited the pitch there. After the second goal, I thought uh, thought they were coming for me. But they weren't. They were sort of putting their arms around me. And just saying, hey, you above it hell, man. Give us one like you give us the last time. <laughs> so, yeah. And that was, oh, the Geordies, I mean, there's no, there's no getting away from it. They're a great crowd. I could always get goals against Manchester, the Pope Manchester City, no more away. I've got four against Manchester City at Main Road. 
before and after on Monday. That was when Tommy Browell. Yeah, well, I wanted to go for a cup of tea. You've got to take all the, the risk. I mean, which I did. I had uh, just over 15 operations. You get it back a bit. Uh, there's a case of Blackburn, where they had a big fella there, Mikey. And uh, there was a corner kick coming over. But just when I'm going up to add this, he's got two fingers in the back of my football trousers, in the neckers. And he pulled me down, you see. He's behind me. And uh, when he knows that I haven't gone up for it, he turned down and said, You didn't really well get that one. No, I said, you did, thank you very much, look where it's gone. It hit him, hit his shoulder and went in the net. And this ball, which was uh, pumped right up the field, fell named Monte Hart, the centre half, he belted it. And uh, I'm watching this ball and all of a sudden I can see the uh, shadow lengthening, knowing then that the goalkeeper had come out of his goal. So instead of me breasting it down, or footing it down and taking it on, I jumped up and back headed it. It went up over his head, and uh, that would take the place about oh, eight or ten yards outside the penalty area. And as this here thing grew, this uh, shadow grew, I went up, flicked it at the back of my head, and it dropped in the empty net. And then he said, how bloody hell do you get these balls? And the factor said, that thing, you're getting that. How do you mean? I said, well, look at your shadow. <laughs> everything that I promised my parents and myself. Just being a local lad, I just wanted to do exactly what I had. Done.